Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Thursday, February 24th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by MailRoute.info. MailRoute is a secure hosted service that provides enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering to companies of any size. Try it right now, absolutely free, at MailRoute.info. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Howell. Hey, I remember you guys. Whoa, whoa. You used to work here. Yeah. How does the show go anyway? Do I have to know? Yeah, do we start with what's email? What's going on in the world? Right. Uh, no, we've we've got it all scripted. Just Great. read the prompter right over there. Hi, and... I'm Sarah. L oh wait. <laughs> It's all, it's all there for Welcome. you. Welcome. Uh, joining us uh, today is independent tech journalist and host of the show Tech 5 and the ZA Tech Show, or, or is it the ZA Tech Show, Mr. Simon Dingle. Hello. Hi, Simon. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing great. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. We we tried to get Simon on uh, last week uh, to report right. from Mobile World he Congress. Was in Barcelona. But they, uh, they didn't have enough bits. They were only sending us. They don't us have the interwebs in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, they they were under siege. What are you going to do by mobile companies? <laughs> uh, but we're glad we we're yeah. able to get you back today, man. It's good to, good to have Me you too. on. Are you you uh, back safely in uh, South Africa now? Looks like it. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> back in Johannesburg. That, that's what it looks like. Um, a, a shelf of books. <laughs> this is what Africa looks like. All of it. <laughs> um, that's You're actually gorillas. outside right now. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the forest. On a safari. <laughs> the forests <laughs> yeah. actually grow books. That's, that's, that's right. That's what they do. All right. Well, trees. Let's uh, start off with Intel's big announcement uh, this morning, uh, the unveiling of Lightpeak. Uh, they've, they've kicked it around for a couple of years, and it is finally official, and they've renamed it Thunderbolt. Not to be confused with the HTC Thunderbolt. No, That's which we will get to later which in the show. will be confusing to some <laughs> yeah. people. Uh, Thunderbolt is a replacement for FireWire, for USB, for ag everything. It, it can carry uh, net connections. It can replace Ethernet. It can carry video. It can carry data. Uh, it is 10 gigabit per section. Uh, I can get per section. I used to I used to be able to know how to do tech. 10 gigabit per second bi-directional, uh, twice as fast as USB, three to, uh, 12 times faster than FireWire. Uh, they like to throw out these examples when they announce these things. So back up a full Blu-ray movie in 30 seconds or sync 64 gigabytes of music in one minute. Uh, there is uh, There are some distance limits to it. The uh, first implementations of it will be in copper. Uh, and those will be limited to three meters or 10 feet. Uh, you can also have a fiber for data, copper for power, and that, that can go tens of meters. And then there will also be fiber-only cables that don't carry power. They just carry the data, and those can be in hundreds of meters. Uh, the, cool thing about, the other cool thing about Thunderbolt is you can daisy-chain up to six devices. So the idea is you might only need one or two ports on a device, and then you can hook up your external drive, your display, uh, any other peripherals you want, up to six devices. And the 10-watt power that it can provide can pass through to all of those devices, so they can all be powered. Well, and you're, so you just bought a new MacBook Pro today. I did. You did. So you now have the Thunderbolt capability, but let's just say that you're already hooking your MacBook into an uh, external display. The mini display port uh, in will still work. Yeah, the, uh, the form factor is the display port port uh, because uh, Thunderbolt uses PCI Express uh, for data and the display port for b video. And this explains to me why Mac chose to switch to DisplayPort. Remember when they, they dropped DVI and they went to DisplayPort and everybody was like, well, what, what was that doing? about? Nobody uses DisplayPort. This is why uh, they were preparing uh, for Lightpeak and Thunderbolt. They have been partnering with Intel on this for a long time. Also, uh, Thunderbolt can support FireWire and eSATA adapters. So if you have FireWire and eSATA devices, you can use them on a Thunderbolt port. Uh, in addition to the MacBooks, we'll talk about those in a second, uh, but Promise and LaCie are both uh, announcing drives, hard drives that will support Thunderbolt coming out this summer. LaCie's is going to be called Little Big Disc. I love that. I'm a LaCie fan. 
I've I've been using their hard drives for a long time, so that's cool. Yeah, because I mean the whole thing about this Light Peak slash Thunderbolt is everyone goes cool, so it's a new well, but who has it? Well, nobody yet. It's going to be rolling out soon, but for the most part, you just want to be able to to make things capable with the, the the displays you're already using and and the hard drives you might already have. Well, the hard drives. You're still gonna you're after gonna buy the new ones. There's not much you can do about it otherwise. I mean, this is fireware capable. Yeah, you can you can you can. Uh, Intel was a little cagey about whether there would be USB adapters for Thunderbolt. Uh, they did say they all promise to continue to support USB 3.0, uh, even though they are also championing Thunderbolt. Simon, what's your take on all of this? Uh, I, do you think does, that Thunderbolt will become the new USB and uh, displace all of this stuff? Well, I, I kind of hope it, it will. The idea of having one port to kind of, you know, bind them all is, is great. Um, you know, having a display daisy-chained with hard drives and, and everything in one uh, sounds awesome. And, and by the looks of it, the performance is way better than USB 3, so bring it on. Yeah, the theoretical max of, of Lightpeak, or now called Thunderbolt, is 100 gigabits per second. Uh, so and, and it, I think it can go even higher. This this implementation is only 10 gigabits per second, but part of that's just because it's copper. Mm. Then eventually, we'll be able to get all fiber, or at least fiber with copper power. Well, so why is Intel so committed to USB three? Well, they're not that they're they're not committed to USB three because 3. It's, it's 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 that they kind of don't want to appear to be abandoning mm -hmm. USB. So they've had to say like, we're still committed. Don't worry. We're not going to yeah. totally kick you under the bus. All the promises we may the have bus. made yeah. a variety of folks. <laughs> Still coming out, just not as cool as Thunderbolt. Yeah. And they're, they're dragging their heels on it. There should be USB 3 chipsets from Intel already. Uh, but this is why they've been dragging their heels, because they want there to be a head-to-head -head competition between Thunderbolt and USB 3. That's my guess. Interesting. Apple also introduced new MacBook Pros today. Of course, the big feature, as we mentioned, is that they come with a Thunderbolt port. Essentially, they just took the display port and turned it into a Thunderbolt port, so they didn't add another port to the side of it. Their icon looks just like a little camera flash, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, looks like, uh, it looks like it's just a powered display port. That's yeah. a port for your uh, external flash for your eyesight, now known as FaceTime HD camera, right? <laughs> right. No, it's it's not. But there is a no. there is a new uh, camera in the the uh, MacBook Pros, uh, FaceTime camera that supports 720p. Uh, they've added uh, quad core processors to most of the models. Uh, there's new 13, 15, and 17 inch uh, models. They also have added uh, 750 gigabyte hard drive options. Uh, they, they've added uh, SD uh, card slots to all the models now. Uh, so up to 64 gigabytes of SDXC cards can, can go in there as well. They also dropped uh, NVIDIA for AMD on, their, on, their, uh, on the graphics side of things, didn't they? Yeah, and a lot of people think that's because NVIDIA and Intel aren't playing along so well, but that's that's interesting thought, right, Simon? Mm -hmm. I mean, Intel and AMD don't play along so well either. No, they don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just glad that we've got new MacBooks out finally. I've, I've been waiting to upgrade for the last four months. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, and now they're finally here. So uh, we can't order yet in South Africa, but I'll be following your footsteps, Tom. Yeah. I need a new MacBook. Excellent. You know, it's funny, this 17-inch MacBook that, you know, has been the bane of my existence in size, but I chose specifically because it was the fast, this is like back last August, it was the fastest processor that I could get. It was the i7 dual core, and that was very exciting. Well, <laughs> I could just have a 15-inch that, that did the same. Yeah, that's a quad core. So, that's a quad core. So, I mean, quad cores, it's like, yeah, awesome. That's, that's you know, twice mm. as fast as far as my video editing goes, which is what bogs this thing down all the time. This is why I got that's the fastest MacBook. That's what you got it for, right? Yeah. That's specifically what I got it for. But it's nice to know that um, that there are more options for people who, who need a souped-up system. A couple other uh, interesting... Uh, oh, go ahead, Simon. I was just going to say the big one here is for fans of the 13-inch model because that was really overdue for an upgrade, and uh, they finally brought it up to speed with the uh, the 15 and the 17-inch. It's a, it's, a, it's a real little powerhouse now. Starts at $1,200 for the 13-inch, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. your base model for the 15-inch is $1,800. Base model for 17-inch is $2,500. So these are in the typical Mac price ranges. Uh, they also announced Apple FaceTime for Mac is finally out of beta. That, I guess that goes along with the new FaceTime camera that replaces the iSight camera. Uh, FaceTime now is in the Mac App Store. Costs you $0.99. Cents. 
and also, Mac rumors noting that Apple is discontinuing Mobile Me retail boxes and apparently even removed Mobile Me from its online store. Well, that's weird because last week when I went to the uh, Verizon iPhone launch and I went in and bought an iPhone, at least it doesn't want it anymore, so I don't have to take it back. Uh, but uh, at the time, because I'm a MobileMe user, they said, you know, if you, if you buy MobileMe now, you can get it for 69 for the next year instead of 99 which is normal price. Right. And I got it in a little box, and I thought, this really feels like, why do they just give me <laughs> MobileMe in a box? Is right. there nothing Apple can do that's less archaic than that? I got the last one, I guess. Yeah, you got one of the last <laughs> ones. Uh, it lo looks like the 60-day uh, free trial of MobileMe is still going on, so everyone's speculating that within the next 60 days... Mobile Me will become a free service and you just won't have to pay for it anymore. Well, you know, I think that's good for everybody. I have bought Mobile Me over the last couple of years for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and I've never really been able to explain why it should cost $99 a year or even 69 So more people will certainly use it for the $0 a year price. By the way, FaceTime in the, uh, in the Mac App Store, I can't get it to work. Tried to download it all morning. Oh, uh, I wonder if it's getting slammed. I think it is. Now, I have the beta. Do I have to pay for the other one now? Will my beta stop working? Uh, I think you have to pay 99 cents like everybody else, Tom. Why? I, but I already have it. But did you but pay? Is it going to stop working? Are they going to disable my, my beta? I'm going to turn it on right now and see what happens. You should see. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to download, and I'm, I'm not sure what the situation is uh, in the App Store. But I wanted to know how my eyesight looked different. Because, I mean, I don't have some fancy-dancy new MacBook camera in here. I've got the regular eyesight, but I have ne never had the FaceTime interface. So I don't know. My beta still works. You. My beta still works. Yeah. I'm just going to keep using that. You're so much better than me. Apple also released a dev preview of OS X Lion. That's OS X 10.7. That's the next version of OS X. should be coming out this summer. Uh, the uh, developer preview includes mission control, sort of the unification of expose, dashboard, and spaces into one big view where you can see everything that's happening on all of your spaces, all of your programs running at once. Uh, Launchpad, which is sort of like an iOS uh, version of, of things where all of your apps will display on a full screen layout. Uh, and you can even organize apps into folders. Full screen apps, which means in, instead of just having, you know, the... Uh, the bar across the top, and, and if you have a dock, uh, the dock across the bottom, you can just have it go totally full screen like you would in an iOS app. Uh, Multi-touch gesture, gestures. Gestures? <laughs> uh, that's, that's the next step. Spend jolly. <laughs> A uh, new version of Mail, <laughs> AirDrop, uh, uh, an easy way to copy files wirelessly from one Mac to another. And these, these are the interesting ones to me. Resume and autosave. Uh, so the the addition of the ability to quit your Mac, but when you relaunch, pick up the application exactly where it was when you quit. It won't close out. It will pause the app. Well, I mean, that sounds a lot like the way iOS works. Yep. You know, if I'm doing something and I switch the, uh, quickly shut off my screen, I I don't know, i got to go do something else for a second. Then I open up and it's right where I left it. Also, File Vault uh, will now provide full disk encryption instead of just uh, encryption of your home directory. So, interesting things to take a look at there in OS X Lion. <laughs> also, it'll sound like that. <laughs> uh, now, if you're a sane person, you're not going to want to pay $3,000 for a new laptop. Uh, instead, you might take a look at the HP laptops we talked about yesterday that start at $1,000 for the top tier, $1,000, or... Maybe Lenovo. Uh, Lenovo has introduced their new line of ThinkPads. The T420S leads the way. T420, T520, L420, L520, and the W520. They all come with better power management. They uh, say 30% more battery life. Voice calling features uh, with dual array microphones that sense uh, whether you need both microphones or not. Keyboard noise reduction for video conferencing and teleconferencing. And uh, they're all Sandy Bridge, as are the MacBook Pros that we mentioned earlier. Uh, they all share the same docking feature and the same battery. So if you have people in an enterprise with different versions of these laptops, they'll all work on the same docks and the, with the same replacement batteries. But here's the deal. They start at $719, and your top tier is only $1,329. So... You're, get, you're getting some pretty uh, pretty good laptop value uh, from Lenovo here. Also, the T420S has a uh, whopping battery life of 30 hours with the extended battery pack. So that puts it right up there with the HP we talked about yesterday that claims 32 hours. 
Apple has reduced their battery life claim for MacBook Pros from eight to nine hours to seven hours. Yeah, which is, uh, I mean, to me, I have my MacBook plugged in so often, especially if I'm doing anything intensive because I just watch the power go down. Uh, so it's not crippling to me, but it is interesting that they're like, well, listen, they're, they're you know, we, we've, we've souped up these guys, and so they're going to be drawing more power, and your battery is, is just isn't going to last as long. And then he sees something in like 30 hours. 30 hours? I'm just going to go on a coding spree. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's really now, Simon, long. you were just saying that you were going to follow my idiocy and order a new MacBook Pro. When you see these HPs and these Lenovo's at these prices that are Sandy Bridge, pro good laptops, you still thinking MacBook Pro? Well, I mean, there's a there's a there's a good reason why I'm still thinking MacBook Pro, Tom, and that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I. <laughs> this 30 hour battery life just sounds too good to be true. I, I, I can't wait to try it out and I, I certainly hope that uh, they're not full of it and it really is 30 hours. But I just, I, like my mind can't conceive of a laptop that could power itself for 30 hours. But even it just if doesn't. it was 20 hours, I mean, that's still... Even if it was 15, it would be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it definitely adds like a pound of weight because of all the battery that mm -hmm. you're adding with this extended battery. Uh, but it, yeah. but it's in incredible, and, the, and these are good. These are good laptops in other ways as well. Uh, so that you know, it, it basically, it's a good time to be in the market to buy a laptop. Put it that. I way. love the way that Lenovo has stuck with that ThinkPad design. I, I was chatting to David Roman and some of the other executives from Lenovo at uh, CES, and they were saying they've tried to kind of deviate away from the old ThinkPad design. And if any suggestion of it just gets met with so much hate from the ThinkPad fans that. Uh, they just kind of have to stick with it. I've, I've always liked the design, but, uh, but right. the HPs are looking, looking uh, pretty different. Yeah, the HPs are looking a lot more uh, MacBook-like with that, that aluminum uh, unibody. I, 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 was a, I used to swear by ThinkPads. Uh, I felt like when Lenovo took them over, though, the cases felt a little bit cheaper somehow. Uh, like they were skimping mm. on the plastics or, or the connections weren't as solid as they used to be, but I do like that design. That ThinkPad design is great. Well, and it's it, at least they have have kept things uh, somewhat similar for the purists because you're right. When we were at, um, gosh, I guess it was back at the gadget event. This is months ago now. The first thing I said to the HP people was, "Well, it looks just like a MacBook." They didn't like that very much, but I mean, that was really my <laughs> first impression. It looked like. How Pretty can they much not exactly. like that? That's what they're going for. Yeah, exactly. For. Exa well, yes, but they but want to spin it as if, as well, if it might care. look like a MacBook, but here's why it's so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, you know, they, they have mm. some points. The, uh, the new little touchpad also looks a bit like an iPad. I saw one last week in Barcelona. Um, they didn't, wouldn't let me touch the touchpad. They touched the touchpad in front of me. Um, it was the do not touchpad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, new Leno the new Lenovo's will be available in March uh, from Lenovo Business Partners and at Lenovo.com. What, what were you going to say, Simon? I was just, uh, you know, singing the praises of WebOS. But despite not being able to touch the touchpad, they, they did manage to wow me with the uh, interoperability between that and the Pre-3 and some of the other stuff that HP's got coming on. All right. Uh, we, do have, we do have to acknowledge that uh, the extradition uh, decision of Julian Assange, the leader of WikiLeaks, came down today. Judge Howard Riddle in the UK ruled that Assange is to be extradited to Sweden. Uh, Assange was awarded bail this afternoon after his lawyers secured funds uh, reported to be 200,000 pounds. And Assange has seven days to respond to the decision if he wishes to appeal. And it, uh, He's already said pretty much, they yeah, will. He said, I will absolutely appeal. Called it a rubber stamping uh, process. So that's not over yet. Uh, we'll, we'll the appeals process can take months, apparently. So yeah, this I is mean, this is going to drag on. Like he's on his way to Sweden tomorrow. What also could take months is getting 4G on your Motorola Zoom. Uh, you can buy one theoretically at the end of this month uh, in a couple days, but uh, the the uh, support information posted on Verizon's site now says that if you want to get 4G, you can get it absolutely free in May when it com becomes available. So buy the 3G Zoom now, and then in May, you can send it to Motorola, and they'll keep it for six days and put in a new module and send it back to you. Now, <laughs> this my first reaction was, ugh, what are they doing? This is like the most cumbersome thing in the world. But, I mean, they are trying to get it into people's hands as soon as possible. They're going to send you all of the material. I mean, the, all the packing material. They'll pay for the shipping both ways. The upgrade is completely free. So it's like 
yeah, you're inconvenienced, but otherwise they're trying to make this as painless as possible. I, yeah, okay. I mean, what, what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those things where they, it's like they set you up to expect something and then it, and, and you start to complain like, I have to send it back and I lose it for a week, but yeah. they also didn't have to do this. That's true. And you don't have to send it back. You can just keep it for 3G. That's also true. So you're right. I know it's what it's like. What what else can they do? Well, they're giving you the best possible. I would say just option. wait until May and buy one that's 4G off the shelf but without having Motorola to lose it. Motorola can't a week. do that with the whole iPad 2 announcement next week. It's like they had to they had to push something out now. What do you think, Simon? Should should people get the 3G Zoom because they're excited about it and then send it back or just wait? I think they should wait. Um, wait and see. I mean, there are just so many new devices coming out as well. If, you, if, if you're really excited about LTE and 4G, then uh, it doesn't look like, you know, there's much outside of the Zoom at, at this moment in time until we see the LTE playbook, for example, and, and some of the other devices. But, uh, I mean, back to Barcelona last week, I played around with Samsung's new um, Tab 10.1, um, the LG Optimus, um, what are they calling it? Optimus uh, Pad. Um, and it's just this plethora of tablets that are descending on the market. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and play with all of them before I settle on one. I think that, that actually is the best advice. Don't get any tablet yet. Wait until March 2nd to hear what Apple has to say. Wait until you see some more of these tablets hit the market, like the touchpad, uh, like the, the Galaxy Tab 2, like the Optimus uh, Pad. And then by the end of this summer, if you, if you can hold off that long, you're, you're going to have a wealth of choices. Mm-hmm. But again, yeah. Motorola doesn't want anybody to do that. They, no, of course They not. say, well, there's an iPad and then there's the Zoom. Don't wait for the iPad. Zoom's here now. Yeah. And it'll have 4G <laughs> after you send it back to us. And it's so great. Cameras. <laughs> All right. Uh, last discussion story for us today. Uh, and and uh, this just broke right before we came in here. A site called Oodle uh, is a competitor to Craigslist. And they are trying to portray Craigslist as a hive of scum and villainy. Oh, people have been How doing this with Craigslist for a long time. <laughs> Those are my words, scum and villainy. O Oodle put out a report uh, in conjunction with a classifieds research firm called the AIM Group uh, that notes that 330 crimes, including 43 violent ones, were tied to interactions on Craigslist over the last year. Oodle called its rival a, quote, cesspool of crime. If Oodle thinks that this makes Craigslist a cesspool of crime, what do they call Facebook? Ooh, that's a good question. How many crimes could be tied to Facebook there over the past year? There have been quite a few. I could, you know, I could think of a few. Yeah. Maybe not 43 off the top of my head, but... Craigslist CEO Jim Buckmaster did not mince words. He called Oodle's report false and defamatory and uh, said no one's ever heard of, <laughs> of Oodle. <laughs> he also pointed out that 300 crimes would be a tiny fraction of the billions of interactions on Craigslist. I love how they, they by the way, I have not heard of Oodle uh, before today, so he's right, at least as far as I'm concerned, that many people probably haven't. But that's still like a really mean thing to say. Hey, that's not true. No one's heard of you. Who are you, Oodle? Oodle. <laughs> And we have our show title. Everybody everybody always comes after Craigslist because they're huge and because they're successful. Right. And so you can easily find negative things happening there. But do you think that they are a problem? Do you think Craigslist needs to crack down? I mean, well, it's to, to, all of these attorney generals and now Oodle, all this stuff starts to make you think, well, maybe Craigslist is is better avoided, and, and I'll go with a more family-friendly service. I mean, Craigslist has, from day one, been pretty vocal about how they are merely a means of communication, and they're, they're heavy on uh, letting folks express themselves in a variety of ways that will not appeal to other folks who are also using the service, and that's why they have a lot of different categories. That said, I, I mean, I don't know how different this is than saying an ISP is responsible for illegal downloading. You know, the ISP is going to say, listen, we're not doing that. We're just, People are using our service in a way that we just can't control. Uh, you know, Craigslist has the same argument to make. I don't know how much they should step in or can. Simon, is, is Craigslist popular in South Africa? Uh, not really. I mean, we've got similar services, uh, not on the scale of, of Craigslist and certainly not as controversial yet, maybe. But uh, Craigslist isn't something that features in our market too prominently. I mean, we all know about it, but... Uh, but it's pretty much uh, a U.S. thing, right? Uh, yeah, it, I, I think it's starting to get used a little more worldwide, but mm -hmm. it is majority U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. Where where do people in South Africa go to, to uh, coordinate crimes online? 
<laughs> <laughs> They're still using IRC for that. Um, I don't know. We, I mean, we, they are classifieds in South Africa, and they have adult sections. And um, I suppose some that come to mind are a local service called Votl. Um, but uh, but certainly nothing on, on the scale or, like I said, the controversy of, of Craigslist. Yeah, I, I almost feel bad reporting this because I think it is obviously a ploy uh, to get publicity. But more, yeah. you know, as paid content points out, more and more companies are starting to position themselves as the safe, family-friendly alternative uh, to Craigslist. But you're not going to find that perfect used couch on Oodle now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you are. I don't know. Craigslist had Again, more than 53 million monthly unique visitors in U.S., up 12% from last year, so it doesn't seem to be hurting them yet. Let's move on to the news fuse. I love that one. The Federal Court of Australia has dismissed a case from the movie industry, which argued that ISPs must take action against file swappers based on allegations of infringement from copyright holders. The court made clear in future cases it is possible an ISP could be found to have authorized infringement based on the specific facts of a case, but in this case, not the truth. Microsoft is doing their best to explain what has been going on with their Windows Phone 7 update. Plagued with problems, the company reports that about 10% of users attempting the upgrade encountered a problem, but of those 10%, nearly half failed because they lacked a proper internet connection or enough disk space because that's what Microsoft does. It stands up for its users. It's your fault. Yeah. Except for those few Samsung Need more users. space. Would you and like a hard drive? Turned off spam, so Samsung updates. Uh, more rumblings of Sprint abandoning WiMAX. Bloomberg now citing three people familiar with the talks. That 4G LTE wholesaler LightSquared is in active negotiations with Sprint to use its network infrastructure. Sprint currently partners with Clearwire to provide 4G service on WiMAX in the U.S. Clearwire could also switch to LTE if it so chose, so this could get complicated. Microsoft might win the Do Not Track Battle of the Browsers, the W3C. Uh, that you may know as the standards body responsible for HTML5, uh, accepted and published Microsoft's member submission for standardized privacy features on Thursday. The W3C said Microsoft's submission was both timely and well aligned with the consortium's objectives and priorities. An official announcement on the standard should come early March. Mm, look at that. Yeah. Go Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, here's one more reason why streaming subscription music services like Spotify are having a hard time striking deals in the U.S. According to RIAA tracked revenue stats shared with Digital Music News, revenue declines occurred in 2008 and 2009 after they peaked modestly in 2007. Rhapsody's bucking that trend. They had a modest subscriber gain last year, but the trend is really largely in the other direction. Google Cloud Connect for Microsoft Office goes live today for all Windows users running Microsoft Office 2003, 2007, 2010. What but, about Mac? Well, no love for Mac users yet. Bet you're glad you bought that laptop now, huh, Merit? Uh, boot camp. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Google Cloud Connect is a plug-in that gives Office users in multiple locations the ability to edit and collaborate on Office documents at the same time. So good for Windows folks, Mac folks in the lurch for now. The police raided the home of Graf Chocolo, that's his online handle anyway, who has contributed to much regarding PS3 homebrew and jailbreaking. Uh, he had his private home raided by police this morning. They confiscated all of his accounts and anything related to PS3 hacking. In response, he released all of his PS3 hypervisor knowledge to the world, which will help other devs to reverse engineer the hypervisor of PS3, furthering the cause of jailbreaking the PS3. So the battle continues. Well, Google is under the Swiss gun again. You know those Swiss, boy, are they sticklers. With the company, the com Google blurs the faces of 99% of the people who appear in Street View uses, using an automated system. But that's not enough. Not enough if you're Switzerland. No, Switzerland's top privacy official is asking Google to do a manual review to get that last 1%. Mm -hmm. That man should be blurred. Google says a manual review to get to exactly 100% is not feasible logistically or financially. Switzerland, come on. You're supposed to be neutral. Manual review is my Dixie Chicks cover band. <laughs> hey, is Simon, is this, a, this is a big deal in Europe as far as, you know, people are really sensitive to the Street View thing and much more than the United States. Is it the, is it the same in South Africa? Oh, hells no. <laughs> <laughs> we have no problem. Put our faces on the internet. It's fine. Everybody's dying was, to have their face on the internet. I got Street View. Uh, there, there, will, 
There were one or two concerns about uh, people's houses appearing online and uh, some uncertainty about what that meant for them, but uh, no sort of major outcries that I was aware of in terms of faces being online. Yeah, We're okay with that done. Yeah, it is, yeah, it was really interesting because in the U.S. as well, people are like, I'm totally on Street View. Check yeah. it out. It's awesome. <laughs> There's my car. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wonder what the what the folks of Switzerland, you know, I mean, some of them got kind of got to be like, eh, it kind of sucks. I think, well, actually, I think they're worried about getting caught hide. not being neutral. Right. Yeah, exactly. The street they, camera. They've got something to hide. <laughs> rolls by. You were wearing Crips blue. <laughs> Catches them in an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally, uh, the Engadget has a report of a new handheld mod. Uh, this one coming up from... Let's see, uh, Technot or Mod Retro. It is a PS2 handheld. All it needs is a battery pack. Uh, the handheld was crafted for a client in an effort to cut down on cost. Doesn't have the built-in battery pack, but still, totally sweet-looking mobile PS2. Forget that PSP, that next-generation platform. That looks pretty. That looks pretty pretty nice. Well, that's cool. Yeah, we love everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they've they got a live action video on the Engadget story. If you're listening to the audio version, check it out. All right, shall we move on to the calendar then? Let us do that. The Space Shuttle Discovery makes its final flight today. Now, someone in the chat room said that it had already landed. Uh, that was about halfway through the show, so I haven't checked. I don't think it landed. It just took. We just watched it take off. Well, if I just, it landed, there's a problem. Right. So I, you know, I, I feel like more people would have been talking about it otherwise. So <laughs> yeah. all right. That was a bald faced lie. Stay up, Discovery. Uh, we talked about Thunderbolt earlier in the show. Well, the other Thunderbolt has been delayed. And you, were, if you're confused, this is the HTC Thunderbolt phone. And it's delayed until March 4th, says a Best Buy store with a Twitter account anyway. So if you believe that Best Buy store, mm. uh, don't expect it before the 4th. And maybe even delay it again. Who knows? Delays happen very frequently these days. The HTC Arrive is Sprint's first Windows Phone 7. Windows Phone 7, is that what they're still calling it? Windows Phone device launching on March 20th for 200 bones. Yahoo is finally shutting down my blog log on May 24th. Yeah. I don't know anyone who's using it. I, but be, I believe Bob Blah Blah's law blog is hosted in my <laughs> blog log. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, no, this was one of the uh, things along with Delicious and Alta Vista that were identified as being sunsetted. So this is the first to go. Yeah, you know, my blog log and delicious. <laughs> yeah. You know, neither I, service of any use to me. <laughs> Who ever heard of either one of them? Uh, yeah, my blog log. Yeah, I, re I remember. I just, I, it's just a funny thing to say out loud. My blog log, you know, it's like a tongue twister. Uh, our South by Southwest coverage is on Saturday and Sunday, March 12th and 13th. We're going to be in Austin. We're going to be having fun. We're going to be walking around. Wait, we're going to be having streaming. fun. Oh, we're going to be having fun. That isn't in my contract. Unless we're not. I'm glad we planned that. Unless we're not. All right. Uh, so we'll either be having fun or we won't be. It's one of the two. Nothing in between. Oh, okay, good. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of live coverage, plus uh, we'll be uh, recording an episode of iPad Today on the 12th. That's Saturday. So if you see Leo and I, say hi. Get in the shot. Tell us what your favorite app is. All that good Take stuff. Take the mic out of their hands. <laughs> Run away with our tech equipment. We'll <laughs> love it. Uh, on the 13th is a big day. We're doing a live episode of TNT, uh, episode of Twit. Leo's, uh, by the way, doing his radio show both days. And then we have a meetup on the 13th as well. That's Sunday um, after the episode of Twit. This is all happening at a place called Momo's that's on 6th and Rio Grande. And it's going to be fun. So if you're in Austin, please come join us. And if you're not, we'll be live streaming everything so you can still be part of the fun. Uh, also, there is still a drop cam up of yes. the new Twit Studios, dropcam.com slash demo. We were over there today. In fact, uh, uh, right now during the show, Leo and folks are over there with a little planning session. Uh, it's pointed at what will be the replicated cottage set, uh, which will also serve as Leo's office. Mm -hmm. And right in front of that area will be the news set where Tech News Today will be. Uh, so... Keep an eye on it. You can see uh, folks as they as they put things together. There's even a microphone you can listen to them, uh, which is mostly <laughs> drilling sounds right now. But yeah. right, you could, might be able to overhear plans. Yeah, I can this, hear Lisa. This, uh -huh. this could be dangerous. I know. <laughs> they have signs up all over the place to warn workers, yeah. like everything you're doing is being streamed on the internet. I, I you know, because Leo <laughs> is he's likes to talk. Yeah. So if you want to listen in on anything that uh, he may have forgotten would go out to the internet, and now is a good time. By the way, he was uh, he was showing off some of the, the final plans but right before iPad today for anybody who wasn't watching live. Boy, they look cool. I am so excited. Yeah. News area, really uh, awesome. I know. We might get desks made out of old airplane wings. Um, and we also, better. 
I asked, well, what about, you know, how Tom gets so upset when people talk to him outside of a show during the day? So we're going to just, you know, <laughs> hold up signs saying, you know. Cones of silence. Not TNT time. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk to Tom. <laughs> All right. Out of the voicemail, 260-TNT-SHOW is our phone number. Mike in Newark dialed that number and left us this message. Hey, Tom. This is Mike in Newark. Hey, yesterday you were bemoaning the fact that the Light Peak acronym may have gone by the wayside for Apple's use. But I thought I'd call and point out the fact that the Thunderbolt name is actually more appropriate for the fact that they're using a uh, electrical connectivity as part of the standard, or the light peak standard, which is why it's running at a slower speed, and it requires the copper interconnects for the display port. Uh, when Apple decides to later go up to a higher bandwidth, they'll need the photo optic uh, transmission standard, which is what we're thinking of with light peak and fiber optic. We'll need a fiber optic connector, and then the light peak name may come back. So don't bemoan, it could be coming back to us, and we could have both a thunderbolt, uh, thunderbolt port and then in the future a light peak port. Now that's uh, just a, interesting. Uh, some food for thought. Yeah. That's confusing. So yeah. uh, so we were talking earlier mm. about how the Light Peak uh, has is, is a copper connection over the display port. Mm -hmm. uh, it can deliver uh, it can deliver its connection as data and video over copper, or it can be fiber and copper with the uh, copper providing power and the data mm -hmm. and video go, going optical or everything can be optical with no power so would they change it do you think would they change the name or would it all be thunderbolt just different versions of thunderbolt light peak was a code name at least that's what the intel release they sent out today said they said light they said thunderbolt previously code named light peak so it's all mm -hmm. thunderbolt from what i understand so it's like longhorn becoming windows vista uh, or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something or like revolution that. becoming we. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. revolution. So this is not something they would change the name back to. Although I like Mike's logic. Fortunately, none to of say. this is confusing. No, light squared no. peak no. bolt thunder max. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to IEEE 1394. <laughs> I like names like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, onto the email. TNT at twit.tv is the email address. If you would like to send us an electronic missive like Daniel did, uh, he wanted to warn us about the company Light Squared. We mentioned that earlier, that Light Squared was talking to Sprint about partnering up for 4G LTE service. Daniel's pointing out something I've heard from a few people. Light Squared is trying to get FCC approval to build out its 4G service, and the effort is potentially a threat to GPS service currently in use. There's an editorial in GPS World that goes into detail explaining it, but Daniel summarized it saying, basically, Light Squared's signal is broadcast in the portion of L-band, that's 1525 megahertz to 1559 megahertz, immediately adjacent to the band used by GPS. That's 1559 to 1610. Now, they're not, oh, they're not the same, but they're right next to each other. GPS is about uh, a billion times, or I'm sorry, Light Squared's band is about a billion times stronger than the GPS signal. Most affected would be high-precision GNSS receivers, which are the most susceptible to jamming. He wanted us to mention this on the show because he believes public awareness is minimal and much more scrutiny is required before this system is implemented. So that is something Light Squared could run into. Yeah. Uh, my public awareness, I, I'd never heard of this before. I mean, what do you... what? Well, Light Squared they can't is change is, their ban. Light Squared is saying that they are doing enough to mitigate any kind of overlap, any kind of you know frequency problems that that uh -huh. shouldn't affect GPS service. But uh, a lot of folks on the in the GPS industry are saying we don't believe you. It's not enough. We need to investigate this. And more. then how do you, and how do you do tests without it affecting anybody? Yeah, yeah. You know? It's not like you can just mm. shut everything down. You can't just for put the satellites up of, and see how it goes. Right. You gotta do, yeah, you got to do some real world laboratory tests and mm. yeah. Interesting. Uh, next email from Dan Ficker in St. Paul, Minnesota. He says, uh, the issue about in-app purchases brings up something that would maybe be helpful on an iPhone or iPod Touch. How about different people having different user accounts? Then the kids could have the area that they could play with the games you want. And then if you enter a password, you can access the financial internet apps, etc. This would be nice for families or kids or even a couple that shares an iPad. Although I think improvements to the notification system in iOS is a much more needed improvement. Uh, this would be a nice feature to add as well. Totally agree, Dan. Um, I've, I've heard uh, a lot of folks have written in to me that it's a family that shares a single iPad. Yeah. And they, you know, either kids shouldn't have access to certain apps or uh, people want different setups. You know, the way different user accounts might have different setups on the same computer. And that's not possible right now. You do have some 
um, in your settings, uh, you can lock down Safari. You can lock out, you can, you, know, you can password protect it, and you can lock out your kids from being able to purchase apps and running up your credit card. But there's not a, an entirely different user account set up. Right, because if you lock that out, you're locking yourself out. Right. Too. Mm -hmm. So I like this idea of user accounts. I, I think when they designed the iPhone, they figured, well, it's one person, one phone. Mm -hmm. You're not really going to be sharing mm -hmm. this with a lot of people. I, didn't think, I don't think they thought of the kid use case much. Right. And I think that people, so, you know, a couple sharing an iPad is okay. You know, that, that'll happen. And, and there's not too much uh, that necessarily needs to be different user account wise. But the kids, I know for, uh, you know, over the last year, almost year that people have had iPads, I don't think anyone had any understanding of how big a hit this was going to be with oh, children yeah. and in the education sector and kids being able to really, you know, get a hold of the iPad and you could, they could play for hours and leave you alone and this and that. So it, it does become an issue. All right. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Today. Uh, Simon, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I'm glad the bandwidth held and you were able to make it through the episode this Yay, time. Yay, Simon. Thank you, Tom. Me too. Uh, let folks know where they can find you online and what you're up to these days. Yeah, simondingle.com. The Z or Z8 Tech Show is, uh, is the podcast that I do. Also have a radio show on 5FM that uh, streams. That's a local radio station. So, uh, But it's all on my website, so you can check that out. Absolutely. Check it out, simondingle.com. That's it for us. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can send us an email, tnt at twit.tv, or even give us a call, 260-TNT-SHOW. We're just going to watch the new studio get built for the next couple of months. But we will see you tomorrow for Liquid Friday.